Well, another DNQ race is upon us, and tonight it's a special one. It's Hammer Carts Double Points Night here at the Millbridge Speedway, and that is presented by Burris Racing Tire. Caleb Clenard is back, and a lot of the other regular DNQ karting competitors. Tonight is a big points night, and someone is going to leave this racetrack with the points lead. Coming up next, it's Hammer Carts Night. Carts is a great supporter of the DQ Karting Series, and they are also supporting tonight's race. It is Hammer Carts Night from the Millbridge Speedway in Salisbury, North Carolina, and it is presented by Burris Racing Tire. Burris Racing Tire, an option for DNQ racers, and they are putting up money for guys who run the Burris Tire tonight. But the Hammer Carts are a very important part of the DNQ Series. Let's go down and talk to Alex Cunningham, who is heavily involved in the Hammer Cart development. Well, Hammer Carts is a big part of the DNQ Karting Series, and along with Burris Tire, they're on the sponsorship for tonight's race. Alex, you're part of the Hammer Cart program. We've got Phantom, which is like Chevy. We've got Ultra Match, which is like Ford. Hammer's like the Dodge of the series. They got a lot of backing behind them. Their stuff's really nice. Still trying to get the name out there. But um, what is it about these Hammer Carts that makes them different from everybody else that's out there racing? So I guess you could say the biggest thing is, is, you know, I build all of them. So I can actually tell people what, you know, they feel like they need or whatever. But also the support. I try really hard to anyone with a hammer to give them as much support and as much knowledge as what I've learned. And it seems to really help the guys up here at Millbridge especially. Building a brand is one thing that is always hard to do. And it seems like you guys are starting to do a very good job with that with hammer carts. Um, Get you some wins out there. You'll be up there manufacturing points before you know it. So Burris Tires here tonight. You are a supplier of Burris Tire. I've raced on some tires that you have prepped before, and it was night and day better. <laughs> so what do you think? Can the Burris Tire compete here with uh, Maxxis? I think so, to be honest with you, especially if the track gets a little bit better. Um, the plus with the Burris is, is, you know, we got tires from 2015. And, and older, you know, and they'll still run good. You're not throwing them away even if they get dry rotted. And it's not a tire that you got to prep all week either. You know, you don't throw them away. You don't have to spend all that time out in the shop prepping them all week, and that's the benefits to them. But it's just going to be up to us to figure out how to make them compete with the competitors. Now, you have a, do have a rental program. You can rent Burris tires from you, also buy them from you as well. Um, you got a series, the Blue Gray series. Tell us more about that. So yeah, we are a uh, Burris dealer. We sell Burris tires. We also make and sell Burris tire prep that you will need ba pretty much only at the track. It's not something that you got to do throughout the week and all that good stuff. But um, you know, we got the Burris series coming up. The first race is here next weekend on the 20th. So we're looking forward to that. We got a lot of hammer carts showing up for it. So I think it's going to be a pretty good deal. Alex Cunningham, hammer carts, Burris tires. You need either. You got to go see him. He is the guy. And uh, good luck tonight with uh, your carts. I want to welcome in Jay-Z from upstate New York. Jay-Z, how is the weather up there in upstate New York? Right now? It touched 70 degrees today, Bob. I'm expecting the titties to be out any second now. All the young college co-eds walking around. It's going to keep this old man young and uh, virile for a little while longer here before I make it to the grave. <laughs> We're talking about the weather. Let's take a look at the remaining races for the DNQ Karting Series. There are only five left after this race, so we are essentially halfway through the season after this double points event here tonight. But our next race is the DNQ Browns Carts and Parts All-Star Race, and we want to thank Browns Carts and Parts for coming on board to sponsor three DNQ Karting Series races, and uh, they've got the crown jewels pretty much locked up in sponsorship. Yeah, that's the signage you want to be on, Bob. Uh, the intercourse racing where everyone's just trying to ram it in there, raw dog and dry, and try to come out the other side nice and clean. You've got the all-star race with all the old past talent that's going to be coming back to race this past that, this, that weekend. And then you've got the um, uh, September 2nd race 
that's going to put them uh, on the map too. And I know Brown's Cards and Parts is a full-service card shop. You need prep, you need bodies, you need setup help. They're the guys to go to. Want to thank them for their sponsorship. July, we have the Bush Classic, a 50-lap race for the DNQ Bush Series, $300 to win. Hard to HVAC night. We saw what that high side track does to some of these guys, and uh, that's going to be another exciting one as well. And that Iredell County Fair is always a good race, but it's also double points night, and we'll crown our first ever DNQ Dash Series champion for the Five Star Tire Specialties Dash Series. And October 16th, the Pink Magic Fall Final, and that's when it all ends there in October. And uh, while we're talking about Pink Magic, let's go down and talk to Jamie Canal's brother, Jeremy Morris, who's here to race tonight. Jeremy Morris, a name that is known very well in kart racing throughout uh, the country. Jeremy, welcome back to the DNQ Karting Series. You're in the old 69 here tonight. Um, last race, you had some issues under a caution. You got hit and wrecked, basically. Weren't able to finish the race. Coming back here to have a good night. You've already won one of these races uh, last year. Uh, what, what do you like about running this series? I mean, this is as big as it gets right here. I mean, if you can run with these guys, you can run anywhere in the world. So, Jamie Knopf, big name. He's also your uh, brother. So, Jamie has come here, run with us. He won the All-Star Race. Is he coming back to run the All-Star Race next month? I don't know. We'll see. It's like, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? I can phone a friend. So, I mean, I got an advantage, I guess. So, I can be like, you know, what's up, brother? What do I need here? So, I keep in touch while I'm here. So, John Kinder is helping you a lot with this card, right? John was a champion in the Arca Series. He runs very well here before. What has he taught you, if anything, from, from working with you over the uh, last couple months? I mean, John's as good as it gets. I mean, as it gets here at this place. So it's pretty cool. I can bring my stuff as far as my cart, my setup, and then kind of brainstorm back and forth with John on his tires. So I, I really think we had the last race won. You know, a chain came off under caution. So it, a little extra motivation tonight to really, to really lay it down. So they also race next month. You got the fan vote. We started the fan vote. Cliff Lovendahl's off to a huge lead, but we got a long month. I mean, are you going to pull a full-fledged effort behind that? Yeah, we're going to do it. I mean, it, he's got it going on. He clubs baby seals, and I win races. So I, if, if I don't get the fan vote, I'm going to run my way in. Um, I'm stoked about the all-star race, man. You always want to see how you measure against the best. So I, I want to see if I am the best, and I guess we'll find out in May. Jeremy Morris may be using this race as a test session to win that all-star race here in May. Well, always good to hear from Jeremy Morris. When you get a name like that in the uh, D&D Carding Series, it definitely um, brings out the best competitors when you guys have people like that showing up to race with us. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the best of the best of the best you can get. Uh, when you're getting information from people like that, uh, you're only going to go to the front. Um, but, uh, Bob, I think because of the, the type of people we have paid attention, I think we're going to spend some extra time on the Winston rules here. Yes, and that's what we wanted to get to next. So here is how it is going to work. We're going to spend some time on this in this video so we don't get 900 questions on the Internet. It's going to start with the practices. The Winston Open will be first. We'll run that feature. The field will be set off of practice as qualifying. If we have more than 18 carts show up, we will run a B main in the Open. So drivers who have not won a race will try to make this race. Um, it's a $25 entry fee, and the top to be determined finishers will go into the Race of Champions. Now, the Race of Champions is past the and race winners and open transfers. The top 10 finishers transfer to the All-Star Race. It's a $20 entry fee to enter the Open. If you transfer from the Open, you do not have to pay any extra. And if you're in the Race of Champions, you pay $25. And if you make it to the All-Star Race, you pay the other $25 after this race. So you are going to have maybe a B main in the Open and maybe a B main in the ROC. But the guys who win in the Winston Open that transfer, they go to the A main in the ROC. So just be fast and you won't have to pay any extra. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> If you get locked into the All-Star Race, though, you'll have to pay the other $25, but you're going to get a Chili Bowl-style event going on here with all these B-Mains that may happen. And that's the way you want it. This, this is how you know the best talent in the Southeast is rising to the top. These newcomers, like the Nigel Standishes and, and the Lovin' Dolls, are going to go up against the, the Tyler Youngs and the Timmy Nice, people that have already proven themselves in the, in the DNQ series. So uh, for, for the money, if it costs you 50 bucks to get the A main, man, take that. I know some of these other series out there charge 80, 100 bucks. This is a steal, and you get your name out there.
So let's take a look at how the field will be set for the All-Star Race. Six spots will be locked in from the 2018 champions. They will be offered the spots first. If the driver is not there or decline, we will go down the line to the 2017 champions and so on. That'll be a $50 entry fee for drivers locked into the All-Star Race. They will practice and qualify. The top six spots will be set off of practice. Then we have the 10 spots from the Race of Champions. They will start 7th through 16th, how they finished the Race of Champions. We have one spot that will start 18th. That will be the fan vote. It's either going to be Tyson Freeze or, Chris, or um, Clifford Lovendahl. They have been slap fighting each other on the internet for a long time, and uh, that has been very entertaining to watch as well. And we have one spot for the past All-Star Race winner or a provisional for a past champion if needed. So Ridenhauer and Jimmy Knopf, Ridenhauer will get offered that spot first. If he's not there, then Jimmy Knopf can have it. And if not, we will go down the line again. So LJ McCleary is next in line, Steve Morcillo, Ryan Truex, Tim Nye, and so on, all the way till we find somebody that has it. If not, we'll take somebody from the race of champions. But the 18-car field will run 50 laps with a halfway break. And let me tell you, we have seen some of the best races in this race, and it's a very prestigious one at that. <coughs> It is, and, and we know it's important. So for all of you that are watching this video, three or four cocktails in like I am, we'll make sure it's on the website. You guys will read it and follow up there too. Again, to avoid 1,500 Facebook messages asking the same damn question. So go to the website. If there's too much to follow here, we'll have it there. <laughs> Let's go down and talk to our ARCA points leader, Justin Anderson. Justin Anderson is towards the top of the ARCA Series point standings. Justin, we've got a double points, ra points uh, race here tonight. A lot of things happen in double points. They could make or break a season. How do you approach this race tonight? Well, we're just going to try to keep our nose clean, honestly, and uh, try to stay out of the wrecks. Um, you know, hopefully we can qualify good. Uh, the last race, just missed it qualifying and just barely made it in by a thread. So, by the time I got up there, we done burn our stuff up. But uh, Ronnie Carroll and all them guys, man, they were really good. And uh, we're going to try to run with them tonight to see what we can do. There's a lot of competition in this Arca Series. It seems like every couple races we have, somebody moves up and down the points a lot as they get going. There's a lot, I mean, you got a lot of competitors here. You slip just a little bit, and you're going to be down about sixth in points. Is it really tough out there to race for points and still try to win? Yeah, I mean... It's, it's a little bit more than uh, you would probably think. Uh, the competition is really good, even though, like you say, ARCA, amateur, whatever you want to say. But, uh, but yeah, you know, you just, you just got to do what you can do, man. Brad Jeffers helps you a lot with this cart. How big has he been to this program? Uh, he's been huge. Um, he pretty much just came along last year and asked me if I wanted to drive, and I said, we'll give it a shot. And... Uh, he said, well, might as well try to run the whole year. So, got to thank him. Got to thank AAR Roofing, of course. Uh, this uh, little team's been fun. It's AAR Roofing go-kart, the 249. Legendary by Brad Jeffers. Justin Anderson getting in, filling the shoes of almost Dale Earnhardt out here, and he's going to go for an ARCA championship this year. All right, let's take a look at the ARCA Pink Magic Tire Prep Series points. And this is the exact points, how they are with dropping their worst finish, how we're going to show them from now on, and look it's how close it is. It's really, really tight, which is what you want to see with this ARCA Series. These are the people getting their feet wet, getting their notebooks built, learning about racing and learning about the chassis. This is the best driver comes to the front, and that's why it's so so close. You got newcomers like Standish and Carroll, and you got some fan favorites like Gerald and David Markham. He's only five points out. It's pretty close. I'd keep an eye on Ronnie Shirk. He's had some bad luck, but I think he can make a run for the championship with five races to go. Let's see DNQ Arca Series points. They're tight, but tonight's double points night, anything can happen. And coming up next is the DNQ Arca Series feature. Push. That's a sound of refreshment. No question about it. I got a question. Does camouflage actually work? Let's see. Wow. <laughs> huh. Did not see that coming. It's kind of the point. Push. 
Tar Heel Race and Supplies Poll Award will go to Nigel Standish with Ronnie Carroll on the outside for the Arc Series feature. Bobby Stokes and Robert Showalter fast the last time out in the second row. Kyle Brown making his return after last week's wreck and Ronnie Shirk in the next row. We've got Mr. Kevin Lively and Thomas Markham in the next row. Jonathan Mabe and Justin Anderson, who we talked to earlier, will be in the next row. David Crops, a newcomer to the series, and David Markham in the 10. Let's take a look at the Pig Magic Arca series. There's your normal deal. Gear rule, burst, maxes, amateur talent, 390. A very good beginner series for the DNQ series. Five-star tire specialties in-car camera will be Ronnie Shirk. I want to thank five-star tire specialties for sponsoring the in-car cameras for the rest of the season. And Nigel Stanish will lead them down through Kyle's box. Green flag is out. We are underway for the Arca Series feature. Double points here. You got to block as much as you can and try to get the maximum amount of points because they were so tight as we touched on before. Yeah, and that's why Stanish is taking advantage of that pole position and getting out in front, getting that clean air, getting away from the shit to make sure he can worry about himself as they're left rearing each other and trying to find a way by for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Robert Showalter and Bobby Stokes battling it right there with Ronnie Carroll watching, and these guys are so tight to each other. I mean, the top few guys have their stuff figured out, but the best part about the series is if you win the championship, you cannot run it anymore. So that's always keeping new guys in here and filtering out the ones that are pretty decent. Yeah, that's how you get the new talent and the new people to come participate. No one wants to pull up with their S10 pickup and park next to the guy with a 32-foot hauler and 1,500 sets of tires and know they got to run against them. This is a series for people on an even playing field with a low bank accounts trying to figure their way around the dirt track here at Millbridge, and Standish is one of the people standing out getting their shit together early on. Yeah, he's been a force to be reckoned with, and he's up there in bush points as well. He's having a good year, and uh, he came on the scene a little bit later as we were on the uh, five-star tire specialties in-car camera with Thomas Markham watching him navigate this track. He's having a good run right behind Ronnie Carroll and Ronnie Shirk right behind him in the other five-star tire specialties camera. These guys are battling it out, running up there in the front of this field, and on double points tonight, that's exactly what you want. Yeah, Mr. Burnett's done a really great job with this track, as always. So everyone's flat out. Uh, and it's a, a, a tire game right now to see if you've guessed right on Duro. As Stanish is starting to get challenged from the second place uh, driver here, uh, they're neck and neck. We might see a challenge here for the lead. That's Kyle Brown of Brown's Parts and Carts, or Carts and Parts. Uh, he's out there running against uh, Standish, and he's trying to run him down. And always good to see new people come into this series, but Kyle Brown looks like he's got his stuff together, and he's uh, going after Standish. Yeah, his cart looks great. He can hold it a half line lower than Standish. Standish looks like he's got a little bit more wheel on it, and he's scrubbing a little bit more in that right front, and, and Brown's just trying to find a way by, and I just think it's a matter of time at this point, Bob. Anytime that you can turn down underneath somebody off the corner here at Millbridge Speedway, just like that, you're going to have a heck of a run as he is going to go to the lead as he takes it from Standish, and look at that, he battles it right back. This is some great action here. They're swapping positions. They're running side by side, and it's nice and clean so far, Bob. No one's been on their head. No one's flicking each other off. This is the type of shit the kids can pay attention to in the stands. This is a great example of what a good race looks like. Yeah, and Brown gets that late, late arc and is able to turn down and get a heck of a run on Standish there going through one and two. But, man, I don't know how much longer uh, Standish could be able to hold him off. This is very good to watch. Yeah, uh, you know, Brown is just has a really good line. He's really being a gentleman about this, Bob. I know in any other race, you might just see Brown, uh, you know, really chicken bucket Nigel Standish out of the way <laughs> and try to get by. But he's really being a gentleman about this. You know, I hope they bow and curtsy to each other when they get out of their go-karts. This has been a good display of sportsmanship so far. Well, he knows he has a good piece, so is he just riding to the foot? And there it is. Standish missed his mark, and Kyle Brown back to the inside. He's going to assume the lead. To the lead goes Kyle Brown. Yeah, and, uh, and it looks like, oh, Standish. Oh, he's in the outside oh, wall in turn two, God. and gets hit again. Ooh, I hope Standish is okay. That was a big hit, Bob. Caution is out as a Nigel Standish's brains are sprayed all over the wall down there off of two. That was a hell of a shot. Glad to see he's okay, at least walking away from that one. I wow, think he's let's on, look at this again. There we go. It looks like Stanis just got the left rear trying to get underneath him, lost the nose, and ended up right in those tech barriers, going from 50 miles an hour to zero real quick. And then he gets broadsided again, trying to get out of the seat. Uh, I wouldn't want to be his rib cage right now. 
Now, let's look at this again from the other camera. All four tires off the ground. One of the hardest hits I've ever seen. And thank God for that safer barrier. Yeah, you know, that's why the Brunettes do such a good job here. They know where the trouble spots are on the racetrack. And I think Standish uh, owes them a thank you uh, because he's not dead right now. That That is a hell of a shot. I mean, that thing is destroyed. He's going to run the bush race, but I don't think it's going to happen now. No. Nah. The spindle, axle, maybe the right side frame rail, that's all shot right now. It'll be a miracle if he makes it out again. Well, we're getting ready to go back green. Single file restarts after last week's race. Uh, we had to take away the choose cone restarts for this and Bush because of that race. They'll be back eventually as we go back under green. Kyle Brown leads the field. Man, I think he's the class of the field. Him and Standish were running away with it. I'd be surprised if anyone else, like a, a Lively or a Shirk, would be able to catch him. Uh, a Brown looks like he's got his shit figured out. Yeah, he definitely does. Bobby Stokes having a good run. He he started last week with us and uh, seems like his stuff's coming together. Oh, a little sideways there for uh, Ronnie Carroll as Ronnie Shirk looks to the inside of him, gets down to the loose stuff. And on board with Thomas Markham in the Five Star Tire Specialties in-car camera. He's racing with Ronnie Shirk, and like we said before, these guys almost hit the wet spots and they don't know they're there, but that's kind of what this series is built on is guys getting seat time in this track so they can go and run the Bush Series and graduate and, and run competitively. That's exactly right. We can't expect a whole lot from this series. You know, people like Shirk are getting some experience. People like Brown are showing them how it's done. And that's really what this ARCA class is all about, Bob. Yeah, and right now we're seeing Kyle Brown wax that ass with Bobby Stokes running second. Ronnie Carroll third. Ronnie Shirk and Thomas Markham along with David Markham as well. And uh, David Markham has not been that – he's up there in the points, but he's just – he's been having a rough go at it as of late. And, uh, you know, sometimes you'll have that. You start struggling. You start questioning things. You start doing stuff different. And you get off the, pay, the beaten path. Been there, done that, Bob. You know, sometimes I'm out there drinking the brown liquor. I'm feeling tough. I'm doing it at the bar. I'm picking up chicks. Other times I switch to beer, and I fall flat on my face. It's tough to figure it out. you got to go back to the notebook and figure out what worked for you in the past. Yeah, and one driver who was having a good run and had to go back to the back of the field was Robert Showalter involved in that wreck. He's starting to navigate his way through this field, and they're going to have that five-to-go caution. And there it is right there. The five-to-go caution is out, and Kyle Brown's lead is now zero. If you'd like to sponsor the five-to-go caution, let us know. We'll sell you anything you want. Candy's Cabaret. It sounds really good. Do it. <laughs> Here we go. They fire up in Kyle, Kyle's box. Green flag. We're back underway. Five laps to go. Does anybody have anything for Kyle Brown? Brown's cart looks like it's on a rail. Everyone else, their hands are moving. Uh, the ass ends out. The front end's pushing. Uh, Brown just looks like he's the class of the field right now. Uh, he might be one of those drivers that moves out of the Arca Series in a hurry. Yeah, the, the real battle is for uh, second and third and fourth there with Thomas Margum and Ronnie Shirk. Ronnie Carroll and Bobby Stokes. It's only two laps to go for Kyle Brown. Stokes looks pretty good, too. I don't know if Carroll's got anything for him. I think it's really up to Carroll um, or uh, Stokes to see if he makes a mistake, which he does. Carroll gets to the inside. They're oh, door to door. Stokes man. goes up the racetrack. Carroll gets a spot. Lost all his momentum right there. And you know what? That's just part of racing with a couple laps to go. There it is. The white flag is out for Kyle Brown. He's cruising out there and coming off of turn number four. Kyle Brown's going to take home his first DNQ Carding Series win. Bobby Stokes just got absolutely hammered on that last thing, and he is going to finish last. And let's go down to victory lane. All right, Kyle Brown down here in victory lane. His first DNQ Carding Series win. Man, let me tell you, you and Stan is for battling each other really hard there. He jumped the left rear. And he destroyed his go-kart. But you guys were battling out pretty hard there uh, in the middle of this race. I was just battling my, biding my time. Long race. I was just waiting for my spot in my opening. So your first TNQ Series win, ARCA Series, first race. Uh, no, you ran last time. But your first TNQ Series win, uh, how is it out there racing with these guys? It's great. It's uh, one of the best tracks I've been to so far. Is there anybody on this cart you want to thank here tonight? You got a lot of sponsors, looks like. Browns Carts and Parts, Pink Magic, Phantom uh, Racer Chassis, LA Motorsports, Alex Cunningham, Jeremy Morris, Jamie Knopf, Pink Magic Tire Prep. I could keep going, man, but that's 
that's enough. Kyle Brown takes home his Bush Ice and his trophy tonight, his first DQ Arc Series win. Ronnie Carroll comes home second tonight. Ronnie, look like he had a pretty good piece. Kyle Brown still has a pass tech, obviously, and all that good stuff. But as of right now, you finish second. Uh, not too bad of a night considering you go for points. No, not too bad. It's a double points night, so, you know, I'll take second over, over last. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good track. I mean, it bit up pretty good. It bit up better than I figured it would, so maybe we'll make some changes for the next one. Carroll tractor and trailer repair guy himself. Ronnie Carroll comes home second tonight. Well, a great run and a double points night for Ronnie Shirk. Ronnie, you needed this really bad for points. I mean, it looked like it was a great race out there. Yeah, uh, I had Mayo and I had Kinder and Caleb help me tonight. Uh, definitely helped out a ton. Uh, I could finally get through three and four. That was big, been my biggest trouble since I've been here. Uh, the cart handled awesome, I, and I appreciate them giving me the help. And uh, for the fan vote. <laughs> Uh, this vote for me. Who, who wants Cliff here? <laughs> Ronnie Shirk wants a fan vote for the All-Star Race. He came home third tonight, a big points night. Well, the DNQ Ghostface Brewing Heavy Cup Series is getting ready to fire off. Coming up next, it's their feature. Couple of hamburgers and two coffees, one black. Better get some more cigarettes, dear. Oh, well, miss, will you bring us two packs of Winston's, please? You know, I see more people smoking Winston's. Sure, Winston's tastes good. Like a cigarette should. These old Winston commercials are great. Winston, Winston, they make me want to smoke, honestly. I, I thought about buying a pack like once every couple of weeks just to be like, all right, I'm supporting the cause. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're like two drags and while I'm turning green, you know, crush a cigarette out and be done with it. Winston is the cigarette that changed America's mind about filter smoking. Winston brings you a filter that really works, lets you draw so easily and enjoy that real tobacco flavor. Yes, Winston gives you finer flavor in a filter cigarette that's easy drawing. Try King Size Winston. Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should. Well, let's take a look at the Ghost Face Brewing Heavy Cup Series. And James Stanley has the Tar Heel Race Supplies Paul Award with uh, Caleb Thinard on the outside. Chris Page and David May on the outside of him. C.J. Winslow and Curtis Markham. Ryan Richmond and the 54 will round out the Ghost Face Brewing heavy field. And it's uh, 4 and 25 pounds, AKRA or NKA rules, uh, Burris or Maxis pink and blues. Uh, take your pick. Uh, this is a popular uh, selection of rules from around the southeast. Uh, anyone that runs anywhere, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, can come run the series. As we look at the Ghost Face Brewing Heavy Cup points, uh, Stanley on top, Clinton in second with 20 points behind. Mayo, Richmond, Curtis Markham, and Chris Page round out your top six in points. They're getting ready to go green, and James Stanley leads this field, and Caleb Kennard won the last race. His stuff's getting a lot better, and I'm excited to see how those two are going to race each other as a green flag is out, and we are underway for the Ghost Face Brewing Heavy Cup Series feature. And already, Caleb Clenard hanging tough on the outside. He's going to settle into second. Looks like Mayo will settle in. Uh, he's getting fight, fight, uh, quite a battle from Chris Page as Chris Page settles into third. You know, Page is a name we don't throw around a whole lot. But he's starting to get his program soared. He's he's a, not a quite a threat to win right now, but he can definitely be in that podium, second, third, fourth place. He's getting quicker every week. Chris Page was an Arca Series standout last year. Shot at the championship, but failed tech one of the races, and that really hurt him in the points as uh, Clenard is all over Stanley here as they head down into one and two. But uh, good runs for Chris Page, and he's got that hearts backing as Clenard goes to the inside and takes the lead. You know, Stanley is a, a standout talent in the southeast. Uh, he's one of Phantom's go-to guys. He knows go-karts inside and out, but I think that just goes to show how good Clenard is. He's got that baby blue, powder blue body with those pink numbers. If I'm one of those pit lizards in the back, I'm trying to go home with uh, Caleb Clenard tonight. Yeah, as uh, he leads this field right now over James Stanley and uh, Chris Page in third. Chris Page is in the hearts uh, cart. That's uh, one of the hearts pieces there. And uh, they always have good stuff, so it's good to see them give him an opportunity to uh, try and race in this series. It looks like it is working out so far. 
Yeah, it's kind of like in the Xfinity series, you you pay to play. You know what I mean? Uh, Joe Gibbs will definitely take your money as long as you have a, a shred of talent and two hundred and fifty grand a race yeah. to yeah. go out there and bang fenders at Iowa. So uh, it is good to see them give someone a chance. Um, there is a lot of talent out there that can't run on their own, and uh, it's nice to see Hearts HVAC give someone a shot and let them have a good time here at Millbridge. Mayo, Winslow, and Ryan Richmond, that kind of second half of the field getting a little strung out too. And just like any other race, you got your top three, your back three. And uh, that's about it. You got the class of the field in the other half, and, you know, maybe at five to go they have an opportunity. We do have choose cone restarts here tonight, so we'll see if something go on. Let's go down First and talk to Nigel Standish. Okay? that it. I think we'll probably know tomorrow. Uh, I wear a rib protector for that reason. I, I hit a ton. Never hit that hard. So. You're going to try to get back out there? We are. I got a bunch of army over here thrashing. It. We got a lot of bent parts and bent spirits, but we're going to try to give him hell. Is he in the push race, too? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, Nigel Stannis got his hands busy and a lot of work ahead of him. This feature's laps are winding down, so they better hurry up and get that thing out. I'm amazed they have that many spare parts in the trailer, especially from an Arca Series competitor, uh, to put that thing back together. But hats off to him if they can make it out. I'll be impressed. Caleb Clenard leading this field, and his program has stepped up so much from last year. I mean, last year he was towards the back half of that field. He has been racing a lot and been doing very well, so it's good to see him out here. And he said he's been racing a lot, a lot, so it's really helping him out. That's how you get better as we get to our five-to-go caution here. I couldn't help but notice that Stanley was slowly reeling him in, seemed to be a little bit better on the bottom. As we get back to green flag here, Clinar gets away. Um, and we got Stanley getting challenged for position, but he gets sorted out in second place. Mayo made that top work on that restart. He jumps down in front of Chris Page. We'll see if Stanley's got anything for Clenard as the laps tick down, only a few left. Uh, Page is right there. He's giving Mayo a run for his money. I think Clenard and Stanley will fight it out for themselves with the third place battle here. That's shaping up as Mayo gets turned around, but Page ends up spinning himself. Stepped on his wiener, Bob. Yeah, that's a tough deal right there as we go back green again. Only a few laps to go, and Ryan Richmond, who is towards the back of that field, seems like he's going to make a run for a third place finish. These restarts are dangerous. They give guys in the back a chance to get up there and be the hero. Stanley on the back bumper of Clenard as they come to get the white flag. Or is that two to go, Two Bob? to go. I'm two blind. laps I've been to drinking. go. Stanley stalking down Clenard. He goes to defend on the bottom. Our cameraman has some sort of shaking syndrome tonight as the white flag is out for Clenard. Michael J. Fox Photography Services here this afternoon as Clenard starts to open up a little bit of a gap over Stanley. I don't think Stanley's got anything to do. As he left rears him, tries to make a move, can't pull it off. Clenard hand in the air. He takes home the win in Ghostface Brewing Heavy. Caleb Clenard down here in victory lane. It's two in a row for Caleb Clenard in the Ghostface Heavy Brewing Cup Series. Caleb, this was not your main focus at the beginning of the year, but it is starting to look like it really is going to be your shot at winning a championship this year. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of studying on these points right here, and with the drop race, now that we got this win, we should be 20 points in the lead after the drop. So, you know, after missing the first race of the year, since y'all ran with the regular Millbridge deal, I never thought we would have been sitting here leading the points after the drop race, but still a long season to go, but miss you Motorsports, Ultramax, Fast Forward Clutches, Bobby Stokes, Ashley Ellison Jr., Damon Eames, my dad, Taylor Kenton, can't thank them all enough. So we, we've seen you race here before with pretty good success, but something has clicked over the last year. What, what can you attribute this success to? Basically everything I just said, you know, everything adds up, completely a team effort here. Caleb Kennard, your winner tonight in the Ghostface Heavy Brewing Cup Series. James Stanley Jr. came home second tonight in the Ghostface Heavy Brewing Series Cup race. All you could do to pass him there at the end, just to, just seemed like you just couldn't get underneath him to make that pass. Mine wanted to just get up the drive off the corner like his did. His, he'd get through the center and it just launch up off the corner and mine just didn't have that with him. Um, I mean, that's where he really beat me. I can kind of get him going in, but I had overdrive and then it would just kill it off the corner. So he done a good job. So coming up, uh, you got the Cup Series race. What are you going to do different? I got another set of tires. I hope they'll be a little bit better. I mean, that's the only thing I can do, switch tires and hope for the best. James Stanley, a good double points night race for him tonight, though. It happened, huh? 
Right. Usually the top side does not work here at Millburn Speedway, but David Mayo, you made that shit work there at the end. You got up top, got around everybody. I guess Chris Page started a race with somebody back there, and uh, you end up with a third-place finish. Yeah, we looked out with the uh, high side restart for once. I think I made it work. Pretty happy with that. I think we're going to have a pretty good race off between us three because it's one, two, and three consistently. So we're going to go work on some tires a little bit. Wasn't expecting the track to be in the conditions to end the night, but we dealt with it and we had some fun. And I appreciate the NQ series for putting this on. David Mayo in a hammer car tonight and the Ghostface Brewing card as well. He's going to take him a third place finish. Go check us out, Main Street. Ghostface. Get some Ghostface beer, whiskey, and wine. Well, a good Ghost Face Brewing Heavy Cup Series race. And coming up next, the DNQ Bush Series feature. Kelly, just between you and me, you find Earnhardt, you know, intimidating? Well, he's pretty darn competitive. Nobody trades paint like Dale. He does have that black Monte Carlo. Yeah, he's got that black Monte Carlo. But remember one thing. When he first started, his car was pink. No, pink? Pink, pink and he's never gotten over it. Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more champions trust, no matter what color they're painted. All right, the Carroll Tractor Trailer Repair Bush Series starting lineup. Nigel Standish, after that wreck, made it out to start in the front row. I can't believe it. Robert Showalter better step up his game. There's no reason he should lose, along with Josh Long, to Standish the rebuilt go-kart. Carroll and Rob Bates in your next row, and Mike Contarino and Adam Wilcox. Tim Contarino, it's a family affair here at DNQ, and Jeremy Axel Morris rounding out the field. The Carroll Tractor and Trailer Repair Bush Series, stock gears. Maxis, you can also run Burris. Nobody's running them tonight. They were trying to give money away to run them, but I don't think anybody's running them. Stout field here tonight for a Wednesday night at Millburn Speedway in Salisbury, North Carolina. Jeremy Morris driving the teammate car to Kyle Brown, so look for him to be really fast tonight. You know, Bob, I'm worried about why people aren't running the Burris. When the track gets dry, that line gets black. You see that monster ultra black uh, prep groove building in there. The green flag's out. Uh, a Burris 33 with no inside roll and maybe a few wipes during the week might be the ticket here over the Maxis, but no one's willing to take the risk and try something new that they're not used to. Yeah, they don't know it, so they don't run it. As uh, I'm still amazed that Standish is even out there running. You want to know what's even more amazing? We have just heard that Standish engine was claimed. As we go on board with Mike Connerito on the five-star tire specialties in-car camera, somebody claimed Nigel Standish's engine after he destroyed the wall with it. You know, I'm amazed that people just can't realize when someone's got a little more talent than them. Standish has been slowly working his way towards the front, being a guy that's been a semi-contender to a guy that's been out front the last two or three races. So, uh, you know, haters are going to hate. What are you going to do, Bob? Show Walter to the inside of Adam Welsh. Ronnie Carroll in tow as well. Adam Welsh is so fast in these carts. It is ridiculous as he hangs on the outside of Show Walter. He, he's very talented, just uh, needs maybe to slow down a little bit. And uh, he'll probably win a bunch of races here. Josh Long slides it in on Rob Bates. And now uh, the rest of the field there, but Welsh is one of those guys that's very talented as we're watching Carol and Showalter battle it out. Welch has led a bunch of laps so far this season. He's really starting to get the hang of this Predator package, that you know gear-bound rule you have, and figuring out what goes fast. Uh, I'm interested to follow the storyline of Rob Bates. He's been up front a couple times towards the end of the season last season, uh, and he shows up at the random times at the end of the race, but right now he's struggling to keep up with the field. Yeah, and you know, just like I said, you start struggling times through the year. It looks like Welsh is struggling pretty hard right now. He is definitely threw the anchor out after starting second. Battling with Tim Contarino, Mike's dad, for those spots towards the back of the field and who gives a shit land. As uh, Show Walter and Carroll way behind, Nigel Standish. And uh, amazing that thing's even driving straight, let alone out here leading this race. Go on board, Mike Contarino on the five star tire, especially his in car camera. He's racing Rob Bates. Bates looks like he's moving around a little bit. Maybe he doesn't have enough outside prep or enough pre-race wipe to really activate that tire. You know, I'm hoping that uh, with whatever he's got rolled out on the inside, maybe it'll activate later in the race and he'll he'll be quick once we get the five to go caution. Josh Long makes the pass on Mike Contarino and things are a lot calmer than they were last Bush race. We had a big shit show, so I think it's helped calm everybody down. 
as uh, Jeremy Moore is starting to sneak his way up through this field here. He uh, could be there towards the end. He's already up to fourth. Yeah, Morris knows that prep program. He's he's no slouch. I think that uh, the starts are a little hectic here. You can get caught out a little bit, but once things get soared, he gets in some clean air, finds oh his rhythm. God. I think uh, you know we'll find him in the top three before the race is over. Yeah, I I don't know if our cameraman had Red Bull or something before he went up there. He's shaking like a tree in Hurricane Katrina right now, trying to film this race, uh, struggling. And we'll probably find a way to blame George Bush for it. So I'm <laughs> I'm not too worried. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll just stay on the wide shots for the rest of the race. There you go. Standish leads. Showalter, Carroll, and Morris with Rob Bates in tow. Bates seems like he's starting to get a hang of it a little bit there. And uh, we're a little strung out right now. There's lap traffic being a part of it. David Markham, who is uh, in a struggling phase of his career in DNQ, goes a lap down. And you know, Bob, you'd think Jim France had uh, something to do with the rules package here. This is a lot like Martinsville, where everyone's one second apart, trying to get their nose in clean air. You can't pass. You know, I, I'm wondering if we need to talk to the people that run DNQ and find out if maybe we need to do 14 more rules changes this season to make the racing exactly the same as it is today. Oh, absolutely. Maybe we should just open the gear in Bush, just not in Arca, as there's your leaders and the rest of the field. I, I mean, I don't know. I always thought it would help with the cheating as we're back on board in the five-star tire specials in car camera with Mike Contarino, who is racing the shit out of Josh Long and passing Kevin Lively. Wow, these guys are a little sideways over there off of one and two. I'm not sure if there's a bump developing there or what, but they seem to be rocking pretty hard coming off of two. Yeah, you know, Bob, I'm thinking the track's just drying out a little bit faster than people thought, and um, they're really burning that right rear tire off of that go-kart, and they're having trouble making good grip. As we got some side-by-side -side action there, Carroll uh, takes a position and moves past Markham. Unless, is Markham a lap down? He looks like he's really struggling tonight. He is. You know, the track is hard to read tonight. It, I went out there earlier, and it it was really wet, seemed, but it got really dry slick, and I didn't even know what durometer you would put on here for tonight. You know, with the track looking as black as it is and having that angel dust in that high, that high line, that PCP you want to stay out of, I'm thinking you want a tire that punches 52 to 54 right now, uh, maybe with some good conditioning on the outside and just a mild conditioner on the inside. You don't want anything too aggressive right now when that track gets hard and it gets dusty and that PCP builds up in the outside lane. There it is. The caution is out. Five to go. Your name could be on the five to go. Caution if you would like. Contact us for more information. Green flag is out in Kyle's box. Single file restarts because these guys cannot handle double file. And they go down into one. And Josh Long proves why we don't run double file restarts. And so does Adam Welsh. Boy, Bob Welch is struggling. He's usually a favorite. He pulls some trim out of the pits here at Millbridge. But uh, he's in the back tonight. He might be jerking off later. I'm not sure. <laughs> Green flag. Back on the way. Morris gets the jump under show. Walter, can he make it stick? Looks like he's going to, and on a double points night, when you're racing for points, these restarts are going to get a little hectic as Morris did a good job there getting by Showalter. I think that's Rob Bates moving up into the third spot. He's sneaky fast, Bob. You think he's out to lunch, packing his shit up, ready to go home, and all of a sudden he's contending for the top three. Josh Long goes around and collects Adam Welsh. <laughs> the caution is out again, and this is just... Just double points racing, man. Shit's going to happen like that. Welsh can't believe it. He's been involved in every freaking accident here. Now, let's take a look at it again. They got Long on the inside. I think he catches the berm, gets up into Showalter, but when Long spins around, he just collects the rest of the field. Poor Adam Welch. Nowhere to go except, except beach it up on the berm and uh, mark him and everyone else spins just to avoid him. Uh, it's been a rough night as we're on board here and see Long get, you know, catch that inside berm, turn around, cause a whole mess. Yeah, the onboard of Adam Welsh here is, it's tough not to slam on the brakes when you see a wreck like That's why all those guys instantly spin out, nothing but rear brake, and these cars just flips them right around as getting ready to go back green. Can Standish hold off uh, Jeremy Morris, which is, this was a good thing for Morris to see if he can at least get a shot at Standish as they get down into one. Yeah, that cart Morris is in. It was faster in the Arca race. There's no reason. It's Adam Welch again. Buddy, what's going on, oh man? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at that. Well, they're fucking... I don't know where Josh was going. That wasn't Welch's fault. No. 
Uh, Josh Long looked like a, a kamikaze pilot from World War II. He just went full send, tried to use eight tires to make the turn. It worked out for him, but unfortunately, uh, Adam Welch got what boned. The fuck? What the fuck? Not happy with Josh Long. He threw a couple WTFs out there, and I don't blame him on that one. There's no way Josh was even going to make the corner as we go back green. No way he was making We're that one. You don't go in the no. dust. Like We're that not even to the that. five to go, Bob. This bush, ra this this bush race is looking pretty good. Stanich is out front, but Morris is right there hunting him down. As these cautions keep coming, one to go. That uh, heat cycle's killing it. I think Stanich has got this uh, wrapped up, unless he really steps on his dick. Coming off of four, Morris tried. Morris needed another lap or two. Checkered flag is out. Stanish is unbelievably going to win. Nigel Sanders down here in victory lane for the DNQ Bush Series race. <laughs> Probably a little sore, to say the least. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Your crew did an amazing job <laughs> getting this thing fixed. I don't know how they got it done. They, spatch they spatuled, uh, <laughs> what do you want to call that? They pried you off the wall back over here in your cart. You get it fixed. And you get the win in the Bush Series race. How does this feel? Well, we took a points hit in the ARCA race, but this is definitely makes things better. I, I just got to thank Grayson and Jackie and Dan, all these guys for getting this thing back together because there's a lot of bent parts and probably some that I didn't find yet. So uh, we might be in the market for a new go-kart. This thing was junk when you hit the wall. I mean, we have video of people will see it, how hard you hit that wall. Yeah. And this thing wins this race. Yeah, and the onboard's going to be fun to watch, too. So uh, I don't know how it won. The, the tires were just so good. I mean, it don't matter. You could put a damn radio flyer out here with good tires and do good. So thanks, T-Birds, for the support, and we'll get them all-star race, I guess. Nigel Standish in the race of champions for that all-star race, trying to make it in. Jeremy Morris down here. Jeremy, you had a very rough practice. You guys threw the kitchen sink at this thing after qualifying. You got it where it needed to be, and you came through the field, come home second. Yeah, uh, my spotter said four to go, so I kind of eased up off of him, and we came to the white flag. So a little miscommunication. We had the fastest car to go. We come from last to second. Guy, guy drove a good race. I mean, he kind of went high. I could have took a shot, but I probably would have wrecked both of us. So it's congrats to him. That was, that was fun. Jeremy Moore is second place here tonight in the DNQ Bush Series. A guy that happens to just lurk around here in this series and has got double points tonight is Rob Bates. I'm telling you, they need to watch out for you because you are going to win this championship if they don't watch. Well, we're trying. We've, we've been struggling a little bit all year and just kind of doing the same thing we did last year, but tracks changed, dirt changed. So we we have to change, and so we're, we're getting better. We won the last Friday night race, so it's been getting a lot better. But I want to thank Harold Wiggins for the best chassis they make, and Long Duck, Long Duck Dong built me another stellar engine, and uh, I just want to thank Josh Williams for all the good things he helps me with the tires because – you can't do it alone. you got to have a lot of help. So I want to thank everybody that, that helps get me here. We're coming for you, Ricky Bobby. Rob Bates, third place here tonight in the DQ Bush Series. Well, Jay-Z, Rob Bates had a good finish, and that put him third in points, and these are the points after this Bush Series race here today, and Stanish is a leader by 55 over Showwalter. Yeah, this Carroll Tractor and Trailer Repair Bush Series is close. Uh, Long at 128 back. David Markham at 149, who had an atrocious night tonight. Uh, but Tim Contarino, he's getting there. Lively, he's getting there. And Welch, 188 back. He's got to figure his shit out. He's got speed, but he's just fucking up. All it takes is one time failing tech for this to change tremendously. So the DNQ Bush Series, DNQ CTTR, a Bush Series still going strong. Those are your points. We'll be right back after this message. Earnhardt takes the lead. And Earnhardt takes the checker flag. Where's he going? I don't know. Hey, he's going hunting. Man, I thought you'd never get here. You got your camo? I never go anywhere without my real tree. Man, what took you so long? I had to drive 500 miles to get here. Hearts HVAC Cup Series starting lineup. Jason Denny on the Tar Heel Racing Supplies. Paul Award with Tyson Freeze on the outside. Second row, previous race winner Caleb Quinard and James Stanley, another pro in the second row. Eli Ware making his Cup Series debut with a veteran LJ McCleary. 
And then the hot shoe, the old shoe, Curtis Markham with the 20, rounding out the field. Hearts HVAC Cup Series, AKRANK package, Maxis pink and blue. Uh, I don't know what happened to the graphic there at the bottom. There's two zeros on it, and it's offset. So let's take a look real this quick. Some Bush League shit, Bob. Yeah, let's take a look at the Hearts HVAC Cup Series points with the drop races. Denny behind 20 points, so a double points tonight could be very good for him. He's in a good spot to start this race, so we'll see what happens in the points as the field comes down. Off of three and four, they fire off in Kyle's box. Green flag. We are underway for the Hearts HVAC Cup Series race. Jason Denny to the lead. Clenard out there. And that start was too good. Kyle said, not in my box. We're going to try it again. Kyle's, Kyle's very protective of his box, as he should be. Uh, you know, it's his innocence here that we're protecting. Green flag back underway, and Clenard and Freeze hit each other off of turn number two. Stacks the field up. And they seem to get it right without getting a caution there, but that is very costly for Tyson Freeze. Him and Clenard will have to now battle back to the front of the field, and they only have 20 laps to do it here tonight. If we keep getting shitty car counts, they're not going to run a lot of laps, and that's usually how it works here in the DNQ series. You know, Bob, that was a huge mistake. Denny is on kill mode every single time he shows up to Millbridge as we're on board with LG McCleary with a five-star tire, five tire specialties on board camera. Clenard gets by him. He's been fast and hooked up all night. Uh, you know, we'll see. Maybe he can move his way up to the front and steal a W here. All he needs is that five-to-go caution. You know, it's crazy to me to think that you can go out and run in a 425 race and then pull all the weight off with the same amount of tires or the same tires and not run as good. And uh, I think that's what we're seeing from some of these guys. I think it's really helped Stanley running this uh, heavy series back on board in the five star tire specialties in the car camera at LJ McCleary. But I think the guys that run the heavy, it helps them a lot when they come out here and race. But the guys that are winning the races, Freeze and Denny, I just guess there's just so much more experience there that it just helps them out quite a bit. Yeah, Denny really has Millbridge figured out. I think when we get to the Iredell County Fair, you'll see more of a free-for-all for everyone, but Denny's really got his notebook packed tight with what makes this place work. Although, you know, we got that five-to-go caution coming up, and it's going to bunch up the field. Anything can happen at that point. There's the advantage to Jason Denny with James Stanley. I mean, they were involved in a crash early in this race. Uh, the whole field got jacked up behind Denny, so he's going to have that lead, but Stanley's still keeping an impressive margin after that. Yeah, Stanley's no joke. He's got it figured out, but when you're the best racing the best, you might only have a half a tenth between you. So Stanley might run out of laps here uh, as Tyson Freeze still tries to run them down going down the backstretch. And there's your top couple of drivers here. So much faster than the other ones. And, uh, man, I just got to say that this series has become ultra competitive. But right now, it is all Jason Denny. He leads James Stanley Jr. We will be right back after this side-by-side -side commercial. I'm going to open up two beers. Okay. You tell me which sounds more refreshing. Gotcha. This one? Or this one? Bush. Definitely the one that went bush. What beer is that? Are you, are you being serious? Yes. It's Bush. Right. Bush. Well, our five to go caution is out. We wanted to remind you that the Winston the DNQ All-Star Race coming May 7th. Come on down to Millbridge Speedway and check it out. It is going to be a hell of a race. And that is brought to you by Browns Carts and Parts out of Lancaster, South Carolina. Give them a call for your tax. I mean, they're selling the shit out of some tax on there. A $25 raffle, you win a $500 tag. That's a great deal. I don't care how broke you are. You got 25 bucks sitting around us. We're going back to green here. Denny's getting challenged on the outside by Stanley. Stanley back underneath the left rear. Can't make it work. Freeze right there in third. Clenard in fourth. This is a, a great race, Bob. Yes, and uh, that other Hearts cart back there, Eli Ware doing a good job in his first Cup Series start. But the top three are gooch to gooch as they head down the back stretch. Yeah, no homo, Bob. This is some good freaking racing. If I'm Denny, I know I can hear them in my helmet. I know I got two go-karts right behind me, and I'm doing my best not to trip up and make sure I run the best line I can. 
Yeah, this is this is uh, pretty impressive here. Is there two laps to go? Can Stanley make the move on Denny? I know Freeze almost seems like he's a little bit faster than Stanley in the center of the corner. Yeah, they're so evenly matched. Unless one of them messes up, they're not going to find a way by. It's one to go. Let's see who gets on the soda. Let's see who gets up to the bottom of that chicken bucket. And let's see if someone can make something happen. Off a of turn four, Jason Denny's going to take home career win number nine. Jason Denny down here in Victory Lane in the Hearts HVAC Cup Series. <laughs> Ninth career DNQ Cup Series win. Two away from Tim Nye's all-time record. And double points. So it's a good night overall. And yeah, we needed the double points. Uh, you know, we started the season off a uh, race behind, so we're just chasing. So uh, tonight was much needed. So it looked like you guys were all running the same speed. And the restart, uh, the initial start, guys got jacked up a little bit. But... You guys all ran the same speed. This series has gotten pretty competitive. It's not just wear them out anymore. You got Freeze and Stanley right there behind it. It's getting really competitive, and it's really fun to watch. Yeah, um, racing with them guys is a whole lot more fun. Uh, I grew up watching Tyson and, you know, uh, watching him race when I was growing up. So, you know, it's, it's fun to, you know, be out here with all of them. It's like old times again. What do you do with all this beer that you guys win? I know you guys don't drink it, so. Uh, we donate it to the, uh, the Children's Hospital. <laughs> I'd expect that answer from Jason Denny. He's your winner tonight in the Hearts HVAC Cup Series. James, right? Yep. James Stanley Jr. comes home second again. It looked like off of two you could get a run, but everybody was. I don't know if there was a rut down there or what's going on. There. Yeah, there's a rut right there in the middle of the track. If you kind of hover over top of it, it would drive up off the corner. And I kind of figured that out about halfway through the race and was beating him pretty good off that corner. But he just had better roll than I did. I just second place tonight. I don't know. Yeah, it seemed like you, the top three, you guys all have the same speed. It's just a matter of who gets the break on the restart. Yeah. Um, Tyson and Klinner got together on that first one, and that kind of opened the door for me. And then I feel like me and Danny ran the same speed the whole race, and I thought I'd have something for him to five to go, but he's, his just took off better than me, and that was all I had. James Stanley, a pair of second-place finishes here tonight in the uh, Cup Series. Tyson Freeze down here is crew chief Chris Williams. They were debriefing, maybe a couple beers with the debrief after this one. Yeah, probably so, yeah. That kind of sucked, man. I, I guess I boned it up on the start, and... Lost too much ground. Probably should have tried to high line on that re on that five to go, and but it's over and done with now. And I don't know. I just I felt like I had a good piece and boned like I say, boned it up on the start. Got turned sideways. Lost a lot of a lot of valuable position, and it's just it's just so hard to pass tonight. And I'm just gonna have to take that one, go home, try again. Seemed like he had a little bit more center speed than Stanley did, but. I don't know. It, it's always tough. You never know what could happen there. It's, and you're racing friends, so you don't really want to dump them either. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'd say that, but uh, <laughs> I didn't. I thought my best shot to win was to push him by him, and then uh, I don't know if his I don't know if his uh, his period came back this week or what. But he went down in one and jammed up the brakes for four damn laps. So I don't know what he was doing, but I guess he said it. I guess it was pushing, but uh, we just couldn't quite get in there. I was wanting to push him in there. And, Hey, we just lost too much ground in one and two when he did that, and uh, it killed it. I was really wanting to mix it up, but he got when he got away, it was over. Tyson Freeze, third tonight in the Hearts HVAC Cup Series race. Well, the five-star tire specialties dash series is coming up next. Push. Bush. Stick with the starting lineup on the Tar Heel. Race supplies pole is Mike Contarino with Adam Welsh. Can he hold his shit together? Jonathan Mabe in the 44 and Wesley Falk in the 71. Caleb Gennard back out here. He cannot get enough tonight, along with Ronnie Shirk. And David Markman, the 10, rounding up the field for five star tire specialties, Goodies Dash Series. Uh, it's 390 pounds. It's a stock predator. There's a gear rule, uh, but their left front burst tires, four and a half inch wide, 450s, all the way around. So it makes it different here, and you'll get a great shot from the Ronnie Shirk five-star specialties on, uh, on board camera, along with Adam Welch, who struggled earlier, but maybe can pull out a W here tonight. Let's take a look at the points. It is double points tonight. Uh, Adam Welch leading, David Markham five back, Show Walter 25 back, and the rest of the guys have not run the full season. So uh, this is a five-race season. Next year, you might see these guys run more often. It's starting to get wildly popular here at Millbridge Speedway. The green flag is out. We are underway. 
It's three wide going into one. This is a shit show, Bob. This is what the fans pay money to get into the track to see. They want to get drunk and see good racing as maybe it's hung on the outside, but he holds on to the third spot and continues on down the front straightaway. Adam Wells runs the 71 up the racetrack so far from that last race. And uh, not the same guy racing it, though, but uh, he's paying them back either way as Clenard up to second as the rest of the field comes down the front stretch. I mean, what is this is so weird to see these guys are just as fast as the other tires, but it must be not having any stagger just makes them fast. I think, Bob, it's less rolling resistance. When you've got a limited engine with a gear rule, like a Predator and the gear rule we have here at Millbridge uh, for some of these uh, classes underneath the Cup class, uh, having less rotating mass in that rear axle frees up horsepower. So I'm not surprised to see these guys running the same speed as some of the other classes here. As Clenard gets to the inside, tries to pick, take P1, he's got it. Him and Mike Contarino battling it out, but look who's in third. The guy who has, I mean, Adam Welsh, you want to talk about Dash Series? He has got these things figured out. He knows what it takes, what air pressure it takes, what setup it takes to run this Dash Series. And he is always super fast, and uh, he's showing it right now. As these two are racing side by side for the last couple laps, Clinard gets up on the loose stuff, hits the wall. That's going to bring out a caution. They just race side by side for like three laps there. That's pretty cool to watch as Clinard was in the wall. Yeah, eventually they're going to get sick of each other and just nose someone out of the way. It's just what happens here. As we go back to the slow mo, you see Welch coming in third there, Contarino on the inside. And uh, he gets a shot from Welch, <laughs> pushes him up into Clenard, and Clenard's trying to hang on for dear life, hoping he doesn't die when he hits those tech pro barriers. Yeah, you only you have half the tire there to hold you. So I'll tell you what, this um, when you put these on, like, I don't know, I, I would split the shit out of the air pressure. I don't know what these guys race in them, but uh, here we go. Green flag, we're back underway. Welch gets a jump on the outside, and Kyle's boxed, and uh, looks like he may take the lead if he can hang tough on the top. And he does. Uh, and I think he's got it. He's Contorino got it. falls back to second. He's getting pushed. Markham falls back to fourth. Jonathan Mabe up to third. Look at that old school competitor putting it down tonight, Bob. I love Jonathan Mabe. Comes out here all the time. Gives it all he's got as uh, Clenard makes the pass on him. And uh, he's out there running. I, I love it. There, He is all about racing here in d and and uh, definitely got a win last year at AAR Speedway. That was pretty cool to see. Yeah, you know, we really got to give a shout out to these people that have been supporting the series since day one. Uh, the series has been around for a few years now. We've got some faces that have come and gone. Uh, everything goes through an evolution, if you will. Uh, and Mabe's been around since pretty much the beginning. So hats off to Jonathan Mabe as we get some more video here of Welch running away with it here in the Dash series. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I love to see this field. It's uh, a little bit, I almost think this is closer than what we've seen in the last couple races, but could just be me being partial to this series that when we first started this series people thought the carts would flip they said they we're gonna tear the walls down they had all those bad things to say but i'll tell you what i have been nothing but impressed of the competitors and the racing here in this dash series it's just a little bit different of a setup right you have a, a smaller contact patch as we're on board with the the flavor of the evening here adam welch between spinning and finishing last and being <laughs> zero to being the hero here in the dash series uh, it's a different setup, but I think, Bob, it puts a lot into the driver's hands, and it really lets the cream rise to the top here. Um, I Personally, I applaud the DNQ series for having the gumption to throw out a rules package like this and really change it up and let people uh, you know, be creative and try to get a win here. It's right at our five-to-go caution already. Five to go, and we did have choose going restart. So, Clenard on the outside. Welsh is going to take the green. Does Clenard have anything for Adam Welsh? He gets to the bottom groove in front of Contarino, gets to the bottom, and he spins Adam Welsh. They all go flying. Clenard on his lid. Ill-advised at best, Bob. But again, it shows how competitive these drivers are in the Dash Series. Everyone wants to win as we go slow-mo. Clenard on the inside just gets in the left rear of Welch, turns him around in front of the field, but Welch is a badass. Uh, you know, he looks it right in the face. Clenard doesn't <laughs> lift. Clenard ends up in the wall, and then on his head, as Shirk breaks his spine back and into the fence as well. You know what's funny is, like, when you get spun, you can hold the brake. He just rolled up the track to make sure he collected Clenard with him. <laughs> That's it. Real recognizes real, Bob, as the kids say. Yeah, Welsh does not give a shit. 
There it is again from his view. <laughs> oh, my God. That is going to be on SportsCenter Top 10, or not Top 10, I should say. Absolutely. This is going to get DNQ national attention. As you see, Welch grab a whole bunch of wheel to the right. No gloves, mind you, and get killed by the entire field. I'm surprised he didn't flip Clenard off as he was flipping. Like, gave him the finger. That would have been even funnier. That's why the Russian judge only gave it eight points. Well, Sherrick had a flat tire. They're in the pitch, changing it. And it uh, looks like we're going to change that tire. But uh, we had a pretty decent accident there, collected a couple guys. Let's talk to Adam Walsh. Hey, man, this turned into a shit show. Just saying. That 50 car, 08, man, damn, what was that? You know what I'm saying? Huh? That was here. Yeah, the car's doing great. Got my pickle tires on. Doing real good. All good to hear from him. So he's two sides to every story, and Caleb Kennard out of this race. Let's uh, go down there and talk to him real quick. What happened out there? Uh, basically just pop go deal. I was going for it, he was going for it. Got together, put us on the list, but. You all right? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm good, go-kart's not, but I like this five-star dash deal. I'm, I'm glad I put my money into it to see it. Is that right there? It's actually pretty fun. Well, tough night. For Caleb Clenard, uh, a good night though. He's got a win, but uh, he's gonna have to load some wreck shit up tonight. Getting ready to go green. Jonathan Mabe and David Markham in the front of this field. And that's why I love the dash series. Adam Welsh up and forth as we take the green. Will Adam Welsh's wires touch again here, or will he have a good finish? Oh, Mabe let himself get exposed. He's not on the bottom. The whole field goes trucking by him here. And who's that in the 71 tonight? Wesley Bob? Falk he loses the was lead. on the outside. Shirk P1. Shirk's in the lead. Ronnie Shirk leading. Mabe's pushing Welsh up in the loose stuff. Welsh may run out of time here. We could see Ronnie Shirk win this thing. I hope he does. I want to see a whole bunch of beer drank in victory lane. He just needs to keep it together for a few more laps. Yeah, he looks a little tight. Contarino gained on him. Cannot get off the exit of the corner. Mike Contarino is going to make the move on the inside of Shirk. He takes the lead, and there is only two laps to go. It's tight. Contarino didn't put a wheel wrong. Shirk tried to pinch it down a little bit, pushed up off the bottom. And with these Predator engines, you can't scrub any speed. Contarino's got it wrapped up as far as I can tell. White flag in the air for Mike Contarino. Can he get his first win as Welsh looks to the inside of Mabe? He's going to make the pass. But coming out of turn four as Welsh. <laughs> Contarino's going to take the win. Welsh, fast as shit here, can't win the race. Let's go down to victory lane. Mike Contarino down here in the five-star tire specialties goodies dash series. Mike, let me tell you what, Adam Welsh is ridiculously fast. Like, has the fastest thing here, but wrecked, whatever happens, you run down Ronnie Shirk and take home your first DNQ victory. Yeah, it was, uh, it's tough beating Adam. He's always fast. Teammate. <laughs> Woo! That, that scared the shit out of me, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> He's always fast, and I seen my opening, I had to take it. So. You, this series has four inch tires all the way around. What is it like driving this versus driving a regular eight inch tire? This is fun. It's fun. Car changes so much, but I mean, we're just as fast as the big tires. I mean, I do like this series. I'm gonna keep running it. Mike Contarino has got to like it. He just won double points Woo! tonight. So Mike Contarino to take home the bush ice and wins the race. Well, for a minute there, it looked like Ronnie Shirk was gonna take home the win in the five-star tire specialties Goody Dash Series. Man, you, you let a couple laps there. Looked like you might get the win, just uh, couldn't protect the bottom. No, uh, I want to thank Ryan Richmond for helping me out. I started la last on the restart and uh, came back. Uh, I'm just like, hey man, is there six pounds in here? <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, I'm like, all right, let's dig. Uh, started getting through there and Took the, uh, fuck, I don't remember. It was, I was again, excited. Sure um, once sure I got the lead, I'm like, all right, I'm going to block the shit out of everybody. Uh, try to get a, a legal win. Like my last one got uh, disqualified. Um, but uh, oh, I want to thank everybody that uh, helped out tonight. Uh, finished third in Arca, finished second. It's a good night. Cheers. Jonathan may have been enjoying a bush ice after a third place finish. Jonathan, impressive run here tonight in the uh, Dash Series. Yeah, for some odd reason, my car really likes the Dash Series. 
fucking sucks in Arkham Bush, but <laughs> it is pretty good at Dash. So uh, that was a lot of fun. I mean, everybody was really close. There was five go-karts that could have won that race, at least, and uh, really had a good time. So the Dash Series seems to be like your wheelhouse here, four-inch tires. What is so much different when you're out here racing? I don't feel like you're not locked to the track like you are with those big-ass tires. And uh, I don't know, it just seems to carry more corner speed for some odd reason. And it's, I think it's five or six pounds lighter when you don't have those uh, big 10 inches on the outside. But uh, that was a lot of fun. It's nice to finally run good on dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. I know the feeling. I ran like shit on dirt my whole career. Jonathan Maid, third place finish here tonight. Good to see Jonathan Mabe get a good finish tonight. Let's take a look at the Arca Series results. Kyle Brown took it home. Yeah, Carol, Ronnie Shirk has been fast all weekend. Whatever the track prep is this week, he needs to make his notebook really thick and try to roll this out as the summer progresses here. Markham, Showalter, uh, David Markham, Crops, Anderson, Stokes, and Standish round out the field. Standish, though, comes back later in the evening. Yes, he does. Take a look at the Ghostface Heavy Cup Series. Caleb Clenard was protested and did pass the protest for his cam. He will take on $100. Stanley in second, Mayo third. Chris Page, a good fourth place finish. Not, not what he wanted, but what he needed. Yeah, you know, Page is progressing. He's steady. He's, he's like Cole Custer of two years ago. He's got that talent. You know he's there. You just got to polish it a little bit more. It was a move to the uh, Carroll Tractor and Trailer Repair Bush Series. Standish, engine claim, still finished P1. I don't know why you claim that engine, but whatever. Jeremy Morse, second. Rob Bates, third. Ronnie Carroll, another solid finish. And, you know, you got to think double points. So it was a good night for him. <laughs> Jason Denny, winner in the Cup Series. Two wins away from Tim Nye's record. Uh, Stanley, another second place finish, solid. And uh, Tyson Freeze, a little frustrated at the end of that one. And a good finish for Eli Ware in his first uh, Cup Series race. Absolutely, and Clenard had a lot of success earlier tonight, just ran out of steam later in the evening. Maybe those tires that he used were, were going from class to class, had too much on them. You had McCleary, who's normally up there towards the front. He's a wily vet as you look at a five-star tire dash series. Mike Contarino takes home the feature win in a wild finish. Ronnie Shirk second. Looked like he was going to win that thing, but uh, came up just a little short. Yeah, you know, and, and we were all secretly rooting for Jonathan Mabe. You know, the poor guy doesn't have a whole lot going for him. I was hoping he was going to win DNQ, and he just missed out. Uh, Shirk second, Welch, Falk, David Markham, and Clenard after falling on his head and out of turn two there, rounds out the field. Well, Jay-Z, our next race is the All-Star Race, and we've covered it a bunch of times. I'm very excited to uh, see how many people try to make the field. Who's a big name that brings it? Who's a big name that goes home? You know anything can happen at that race. I don't even want to make a prediction. Because you got those hungry young guns, you got people like a Clenar that's had some success, some people like Standish, some people like Welch who are normally fast, they could easily make an impression and knock some people out of the way. Maybe people like a, a Tyler Young, uh, uh, a McCleary who's been around for a while, people like a, a Tim Nye can really embarrass those people and make them not want to show up again. Well, make sure you guys go and vote for your all-star fan vote. That's another spot that's going to be taken up. But May 7th is the all-star race. Looking forward to it. Going to be a really good one. And, uh, well, Jay-Z, I, I think we've covered just about everything tonight. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, great track prep from Jeremy Burnett and the people here at uh, Millbridge Speedway. Uh, I know the racers all had a really good time with the way the service was prepared this evening. Uh, a lot of good winners. Uh, big Hats off to Nigel Standish, rebuilding that piece of shit and coming out and winning the next race. Uh, I know I would be too drunk to do that, so good for him. And uh, it was really good action all night long. I want to thank Millbridge Speedway and all of our sponsors involved in the DNQ Karting Series. We'll see you in May.